don't know what it is. <laughs> what is this thing? It's red and it's shiny. So what's up guys? I've got the uh, Corsair. This is the Fizen based Neutron Series XT. Remember the Neutron GTX? Those things were crazy. This is the XT and uh, the Fizen S10 is the new thing. And you'll see a lot of different, you know, SSDs on the market using the Fizen S10 controller. The Fizen S10 controller is not even fully 100% mature yet. It's totally mature enough for consumer based stuff. I guess the only thing they really need to implement is maybe the, the sleep or slumber state so it'll use um, less power when, uh, you know, it's just chilling out or whatever. Now, first off, let's just talk about the physical, you know, feel, finish, size, all that sort of thing. Seven millimeters, so nice and thin. They also have included a spacer. Check that out, feeling spacey with my spacer. That goes right there on the bottom. And uh, what that's gonna allow you to do is a lot of, uh, I guess, some, some enclosures and also some cameras out there on the market, like the Blackmagic cameras, maybe some of the other, I don't know, other cameras and that sort of thing. They need really fast SSDs and uh, they need them to be a little thick. So they like them thick, that's how they do it. So these are used um, in the industry quite a bit. Um, other than that, it has, you know, red powder coat on it, sticker, and the red powder coat, it's got like a, I don't know, like a rough texture to it. Feels pretty uh, decent. Now they've also decided to partner up with Toshiba on this using the Toshiba multi-level cells as far as the uh, NAND flash goes. That's pretty much what you're gonna see on all this stuff that's coming out on the market for the consumer. Just the MLCs, they're less expensive. In fact, the price on this is somewhere close to 50 cents per gigabyte. I'm talking about this quickly and we're just gonna go over some benchmarks and uh, you know, we're not gonna get too extremely nerdy about this. Um, I'm mainly talking about this because I picked one of these up to be my, it's gonna be everything in my system. I've got, um, I ended up buying one for everybody. We, I got one in for review and then we're like, Hell, let me get on Amazon and get some more of these things because they're so fast. Um, we're going to be using it for gaming, of course. Uh, we're going to be using this for um, editing. It's like a scratch disk. You throw all the footage there that we're editing currently on our machine and uh, edit right from this. Render to this. It's It makes things... You'd be surprised. A lot of people, are, you know, they freak out about the CPU and the RAM and they forget uh, that it's really important to have some nice, fast storage. Now, of course, we have moved on to M.2 uh, and that is the new uh, fastest thing out there. Also PCI Express based stuff is a little bit faster. And I think we've kind of hit the limit as far as, and every time I say we've hit the limit, someone makes something that's like five megabytes per second faster. But this is the fastest drive that I've seen. I've seen some stuff with higher IOPS, but um, not something like this in a complete package. And some of the other Fizen based controllers, and I mean Fizen based controllers, Fizen based, um, you know, units are doing really well uh, also. But let's just get down to business and talk about how fast this one was. So they've uh, advertised 560 megabytes on the read and 540 on the write, and they use Addo because Addo is, you know, compressed data and it makes everything look really nice and, and fancy. So here's what we got for um, Addo right there. As you can see, it seems to be about right, getting a little over uh, 560 actually, if you round it up. Oh, look there, 564, yep. And then 525, uh, 526. So in the ballpark here on the read and writes uh, as to what they uh, were talking about. We also tried an AS, uh, SSD uh, benchmark. I like that one because it does not use compressed data. So you can see there it's a little bit different uh, story, possibly more indicative of what you're going to be experiencing in the computer. And then, uh, you know, as your uh, 4K and then let's go over and take a look at the IOPS. And as you can see, we're just over 100,000 IOPS. The read was a little lower. I ran the test a couple of times and uh, kept getting so as far as the IOPS go, a uh, little lower than expected on the um, the random writes. Um, the reads look totally fine. Ran the test a few different times. So it's just my tests were like 15,000 um, IOPS lower than their tests, but my uh, random reads were, were the same. One more thing I want to highlight before I move on is this drive can really, um, it, it just performs well at almost uh, any level, which I, I, I like quite a bit. And also as far as sustain goes, it can sustain like, you know, 480, 500 megabytes per second uh, on the right for extended periods of time. That's why a lot of people use um, something like this drive when they're doing 4K raw video recording because they have to have a lot of bandwidth and it's going to be nice and fast like this. But take a, take a look at this graph right here. As you can see, it ramps up quickly. Uh, a lot of uh, hard drives, especially the older hard drives on different controllers and that sort of thing, they would ramp up slowly and then sort of hit their high point. This one ramps up quickly. 
and it's just fast the entire damn time. So a lot of uses and I uh, really don't see how SATA can get much better than this. Corsair. Neutron Series XT right there it is. This this one this one died in the fire. Died in the fire. It's dead. Wait, was that the good one?